So today on Project Shop, we're going to be taking a look at these air compressors, see if we can't get one of them running. Now, uh, one of my customers actually gave me one just like this, kind of, uh, like a month ago. And he said, if I can't find a use for this one, I'll give that one to you too. The other one did not have a pump on it. This one looks like someone recently put a new pump on it. But... I don't it's spinning kind of really easy I don't know if it's actually working um, and then this one doesn't have any wiring uh, so he actually called me back and was like hey I got two air compressors for you you can just have them and then some other scrap you know that I bought from him but this was the other one and uh, this one actually had he kept the adapter this is 220 and he had an adapter to like my wall plug I have over there um, and then it had a hose on it and I'm thinking this thing works so what I'm gonna do is focus on this one right now and just see if I can't get get it running um, I'm gonna scrounge it in my electrical and see if I have a receptacle for this uh, that I can adapt if not we're just gonna cut this and put a proper end on it um, I don't have any any use for that right there. So we'll, we'll put a proper plug on here. Maybe I'll open this up and uh, take this out and put a, a thicker wire, or maybe a little longer. I have no idea where I'm going to put it. Um, since I've been in this shop, the only air I've had is this little thing, which for what it is, has gotten me by and done a good job. But this is not like a continuous duty um, or I, I can't really use like my air guns or um, an uh, air needler or anything like that. And uh, I actually need a lot of volume of air because I'm about to spray those cages. Um, I have some powder coating to do, some sandblasting, and um, I have some uh, the actual mister for the milling machine. I have an air mister for that. So I want to get that up and running. Um, and this just isn't going to keep up. And then I literally just picked this up to uh, plug it in and put air in my car tire. And the whole motor and pump slid off the frame. And it's kind of just, you can see the, the bolts. Now, a while back, we had a problem with this thing. We actually gutted this and just glued that back on. And it's been working great. It's actually holding... Uh, 120 psi right now um, but this thing has uh, it, it's just not gonna I need to go over it and freshen this thing up uh, it still works great I mean I plug it in it's gonna pump up but the motors all sliding around and the rubber feet are gone look what it did to the floor it kind of just ground the paint off of it vibrating around so it needs rubber feet and the motor put back on but we need some actual air in the shop. I got plenty of air hose to run all over the place. Um, and this is, this is my game plan. Uh, I wanna get this running and then uh, I'll work on getting this one running. But that tank that I have sitting on the uh, trailer that didn't have a pump, it did have a five horse electric motor that we fired up and ran great. Uh, we actually took it off. It's, over there I think that's it back there um, I'm gonna use that as just a storage tank for air so we can have a lot of volume um, and then eventually I'd like to actually hook up this air compressor over here this is an Ingersoll ran TS 10 that's a badass machine right there it's the only problem is I haven't been able to run it in this shop because it's seven and a half horsepower three phase and I don't have three phase in here and I don't have a big enough phase converter um, that I can power up in here I would need like a 25 horse three phase converter for that I don't have one I do have a 50 horse three phase converter that would power all the three phase equipment in this shop at the same time the only issue is I only have a hundred amp service that thing takes 120 amps just to start up. So I can't even fire that up. I'd probably melt the wires going to the uh, electrical room. 
Uh, so unfortunately, I can't run that big compressor, which is a shame because that thing's incredible. That thing's a four-cylinder. It's got an intercooler on it. It's got an automatic purge valve at the bottom to dump any moisture that gets in there. Uh, it's an industrial machine. That thing is a serious air compressor. Um, and hopefully we can work something out where I either get a 220 single phase, seven and a half horse motor, but I don't even know if that would power it. I don't know the conversion, like, do I need a bigger 220 motor if I were to go to single phase from three phase? I'm not sure, but uh, we can look into it. I got a quote years ago for $600 for a, a motor for that thing, single phase, but now it's probably twice as much with everything that's happened since that scamdemic. So anyway, I'm gonna pull this out and uh, I actually have a plug from when I did that three phase converter a while ago, I bought the extra plug. I knew I would need it for something. We're gonna hook this up, fire it up, see if it works. Then we're just gonna kinda go over it. I don't have air compressor oil. It's kinda late at night, uh, but I do wanna change the oil and it looks like it needs some, but you can substitute um, hydraulic fluid for air compressor oil so I have plenty of that on hand so um, what we'll do is drain this put some fresh oil in it, it works now it's funny this thing right here says add oil to bottom thread that makes no freaking sense I, I'm not understanding what that means this looks like this is the drain for it and I assume this is where you add it I don't know but hey if this thing works that's going to be awesome it was absolutely free um and if not i think between the two of these i can get something going this might work man this might just need just this all wired back in to the switch you know to the pressure switch um and then i do have the other compressor out there i think it has a pressure switch i believe this compressor was linked into that other one already and that's what this was about right here um so they were already using one as a storage tank for more volume i believe this is going to be a better compressor because it is a uh, twin cylinder this might be a twin cylinder yeah but it's just a small little unit i don't know this looks like something that was bought at Harbor Freight. But either way, we'll get on this on another video. But today's video, we're going to try to get this thing going. Okay, this is what we got. I couldn't find the other plug. I might have already used it for something. I'm not sure. Um, I know we used one for the kiln, one for the extension cord, and one for the thing. But I thought I went and bought one and had it sitting around here. But anyway... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, use what I got here. Go ahead and just cut this right off. We ain't gonna be needing this where we're going. Okay. And then we wanna kind of judge where we need to cut this back. Kind of open that up. Now, I'm no electrician, so this probably isn't the right way of doing things. Okay. That's going to be there. Now, I don't think with 220 that it really matters what side. Okay. Now, I'm no electrician, but there's probably a proper color coding to what size, like you got a big fat lead here and a skinny one. I'm sure to code, it's supposed to be a certain color. I have no idea what that code might be. Uh, but I do know it's just two 110 leads coming in. 
So I don't think it, in the big scheme of things, really matters. At least I hope it don't. Never really mattered to me in the past. I, I've never wired anything up and had it burn up really. Hopefully. We don't start with this compressor. <clears throat> okay. I'm liking that. I'm going to uh, crank down on this a little bit. Oh, hey, black, white, and we got it backwards. So it does, it does have a, uh, a gauge, green, black, and white. Um, yeah, well, since there's a gauge, we might as well do it right. Probably should have looked at that before I started. All right, now we're doing things the right way. Or at least from here. Who knows how the rest of this thing is wired. Although I did get this thing from an electrician. But I think he inherited from someone and just didn't want it, I guess. I don't know. Kind of shocked that... Uh, he just called me up and said, hey, come get these two compressors. After already giving me the first one. Okay. Now that we got our color codes right. All that's seated in there, right? Just finish tightening this back up. Okay. And last but not least, there we go. Yeah, they do make things pretty simple. Uh, made in China. You know, it's nice if they have the the wiring diagram right on there. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera. Um, all right, moment of truth. We're going to uh, see if we're going to reach. Yes. We're going to turn that off for a second. All right. Here we go. Oh! That's exactly nice and quiet. I don't know if this works. We got a lot of air coming, blowing across here. Okay. A lot of air blowing out of there. Nothing on the PSI gauge. Go find a blower. Probably should put some oil in there. nice oh it's working we got 30 psi 
All right, I don't know what this thing is set for. We're just gonna let it run up. Um, we'll let it run up and uh, see where it shuts off. And then, um, then I'll go, for why it's actually, why it's filling up. I'm gonna go find some hydraulic fluid and a, a container. Now, I don't know, it says add oil to bottom red. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean here? Here? I think it should be somewhere in there. I don't know. But we're leaking somewhere. I'll clean this all up. And we're going to, uh, we'll take these air filters off and see what they look like. Looks like someone wedged a paint stick in there. This thing was probably rattling some. That belt did look a little um, old. It had some cracks in it. So we'll see about getting a new belt. But I'm really liking how quiet this thing is. I'm wondering where that vibe. Oh, you know what it is? That's it's right there. That cage is actually, I think it's hitting the pulley. So we'll pull, we'll, we, we gotta pull these off and then we can, uh, uh, someone put a freaking screw on that. And then we can see about getting rid of that. We can get rid of that rattle. This thing's super quiet. Taking a while to build up pressure though. Okay, I'm gonna locate some hydraulic oil and a uh, drain pan. And, uh, well, we're getting some kind of noise. I don't know, but the fact that this thing fired right up, I'm super stoked, man. It's a couple hundred dollars to buy a compressor like this. This thing works flawlessly, and all I had to do was put a plug on it. Man, that's a bonus. That's the kind of stuff I love about scrapping, you know? We like come across stuff like this. Now this is obviously used. It's got a 1987 date on that stamp. What's up, kitty? What's up with this cat coming in here? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that cat. What's up? What's your problem? You're loud. Do you not like that air compressor? Something going on out here I need to be notified about? Maybe the cat don't like the compressor. <laughs> now, Oh, it's getting warm. Or at least it's blowing a lot of air through there. Keeping that cool. Oh, like I was saying before I got rudely interrupted by that cat, pretty much a lot of the stuff I have in this shop, I got through scrapping. You know, even like that compressor there, which is like, I think $3,500 or $4,000 if you had to buy it. I paid $1,000 for it and my set of cutting torches, which came with two big oxygen tanks, a big uh, acetylene, tons of hose, and like four big cutting torches. You know, just, the, uh, just that setup that I got um, there. Oh shut down where we at Woo, she went up to about 140 
20, 25, 30, 35, 40. She said at 140. Let's see what this see what this thing says. Um should have a PSI rating on this thing somewhere. It's got a 450 degree temperature. No. No. Ram air compressors. Houston, Texas. Normally these tanks would have a rating. I know my compressor over there goes up. It's, uh, it goes up to 180. Um, that's just maintenance. But let's see what we got here. Nice. Right, I'm going to unplug this. Uh, get some oil and um, see if okay. purge valves work. <laughs> Headvax HID. I don't know what the hell that is. Okay. Well, that was a success. I'm super stoked about that, man. Um. I mean, it did take a while for that to fill up. That compressor over there, man, it's incredible how fast it goes. It, it fills the tank up to 180 real quick. Um, but hey, you know what? Uh, for free, I can't complain. What, cat? Okay, so I found my hydraulic oil. Uh, I had a little empty container. I just filled up. Now we're gonna... Uh, open this I'm assuming this is where it's funny there's something in there I wonder what that is it's like a check valve or something but we got a thing there let's go ahead and drain this down oh a little rubber plug in there so that oil don't look as bad as it did in that little window right there Actually, uh, slightly still amber. So someone must have been changing. Man, that cat is going off. What the heck is that cat's problem? It's like one o'clock in the morning. I've never seen that cat before. And it's out there just going nuts. I wonder if the cat lady didn't show up tonight. There's a lady that comes over here and feeds like 20 freaking cats across the street. And then she comes over here and puts food like under my trailer and uh, under my truck sometimes. It's really a pain in my ass. Because the cats are always like on top of my truck and on my car. And there's some white stuff coming out of there. I don't even think this oil was touching anything. Damn, the cat sn I closed the damn door and that cat snuck under and now inside the shop. Hey, get out of here, cat. Don't talk to me like that. That cat is just straight up disrespectful. Whoa, you got me leaking oil over here, man. Hey! Come here. I'm gonna lock you in here if you keep meowing at me like that. Then what are you gonna do? Hey! I wonder if there's something out there chasing me. Hey man, get out of my scrap bucket. This cat is crazy, man. Go. I'm gonna go try to pick it up. It's probably gonna freak out. Let's see if we can't sneak up on it. Oh, 
Where are you going, cat? Look, look, it's freaking out. Now you're stuck in the shop. Come on now. You wanna you wanna sit here and meow at me, but you wanna run? Yeah, get out. Stay out. Tell you all your friends to stay out too. I mean I really ain't got a problem with the cats, but damn man. They won't shut up. One thing I like, I've never once seen a rat around here. That's a good thing of having 20 freaking cats in the neighborhood. I'm gonna just assume that that's good. I don't wanna sit here and hold this all night. Yeah, it's just dripping out now. Okay. No chunks. It's not black, but it's, it is kind of gray. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that was it. I almost had this full. So we're like, I still don't know what add oil to bottom thread means. That doesn't make any sense. Should I add it to the bottom of the top of that thing? Man, I can still hear that cat out there meowing away. I guess some oil is better than no oil. Let me find some old rags. My little old rag bucket. We'll just kind of wipe all this down. Keep an eye on where the oil's coming from. It's probably coming out of this stupid plastic thing here. I'm okay with that. Let's uh, let's let this thing fire back up. I'm gonna plug this back in. See if that oil mixes in at all. Let's see at what PSI this thing starts to kick back on. Going to need a new fitting. I like the fact there's a, a like a hose valve there. Come on, baby. When are we going to kick on? About 100 psi. I'm going to hold this down and see if it keeps. Okay, I went ahead and filled this thing up to the top. I don't know if it's over full or not, um, but whatever. I unscrewed that. Now I'm going to. Uh, check these filters I assume these just pop right off and the only thing I can see is it looks like the air goes through here and that hole looks plugged that doesn't look too bad okay Let's see what we got here straightforward we can probably clean that wow look how plugged them holes are no wonder this thing was taking so long to fill up that's some dirty shit too Dang. all right i'm gonna get that off and then i'm gonna pull this cage off which looks like I could pull this pin out of one side and this will, I assume, flip up. Let's see if this will just come out. Okay, so I got them off and I got this open. This one over here, it's actually definitely touching right there. You can see that. So I'm gonna have to try and bend that over just a little bit. This one, this one was clear. I mean, you can see right through those holes. But it was, it did have some type of moisture or corrosion going on. I'm gonna try to clean that up really good because I don't want it to start pitting and creating gaps up in here to where it's gonna let stuff just uh, bypass the filter. And the filters, I probably need to find some new ones. I don't know what this material is, but it's, it's cracked in the corner there. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I'm just gonna blow it out for now. Clean those holes out so that both of these are 
actually um, got good flow coming in and then uh, I think it'll work a lot better uh, a little quieter if I can get that to uh, come off of there and then uh, I find this kit from Harbor Freight I think I'll be able to replace this leaky one you know this has got some definitely needs to be replaced so I'm gonna get on all that right now. Hopefully we'll get this thing dialed in and ready for some use. If I can get this off of the... Let me work on trying to bend this over a little bit. I don't know how I'm gonna bend this. I'm gonna say maybe we can shave this down a little bit. I might just put a piece of wire right here and pull it. I think the easiest thing for me to do is uh, just put a piece of wire around this and just pull it back to here for now. I know that's kind of a ghetto fix, but at least it'll pull that cage off of there and I don't really have to get into anything. I am going to get a wire brush and clean up this corrosion and probably, I don't know what would it be, aluminum corrosion prohibitor, but I'll probably just hit it with some WD-40. Hopefully that'll stop the corrosion. I really, yeah, I don't want that getting all eaten up. So I'm gonna find a little wire brush, clean that up. I'll uh, use the air that I have now. All right, we got no leaks. We got leaks here though. Let's see if we can't blow this out. blow that dirt into the filter. That's about it. Yeah, we'll have to get some new filter material. they are. Kind of excited to have some decent air in the shop. That is seriously plugged up. We gotta find a smaller diameter. Okay, there you have it. I got the thing back together. Um, and what I did is I had a huge zip tie I know that's not the right thing to do, but hey, it uh, pulled it over and it's not rubbing on either side now and I didn't even have to pull it that hard. Uh, so I think that's great. I will be looking into new filters. I did get them cleaned, change the oil, put a new fit in. And I literally, this is just a, a, a little bit of the air tools. I have a whole drawer full of air tools that I haven't used so long um, just because I didn't really have air. Okay. I don't think I've ever used this. A little air drill. <laughs> I don't even know what I would use this for. Being that I have electric drills. Now this I'd probably use. I like that. I still want an electric one of them. And then this here, this is actually the diamond stone that I used to sharpen the inside of the granulator blades with. I can't get this thing to kick on. Man, this thing 
hold a lot of air. There it is. All right, now I'm hearing another. I had all the noise away. vibration this thing is super quiet Shit. that started when I tightened that thing up let me loosen this up real quick ah see I don't think I need to have that that tight because I pulled it in with that all right, let me see um, what's happening here, why that did that. That is really freaking close. How can we lower this down some? Right there, loosen that. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, all right, just just minor adjustments, but Let me work on this a little bit. I need to get a bigger gap in there. Probably beating on it with the crescent wrench is not the uh, ideal way of doing it. Much better. Now we got some clearance. Now, this thing fire back off. Now, the only issue I'm having now is, you hear that? Probably can't tell, but the back side of that, this is like super soft brass or whatever, but those ball indentations right there are from the balls that are inside of there and it's literally getting indentated into there so i actually have some metal ones here i'm gonna see if i can't swap that out with a metal one real quick and uh, hopefully solve that problem the same one yep and then we'll be ready to put this thing in the service and the only thing we had to do is clean the filters adjust the belt guard and change two fittings change the oil which all of that I had right here in the shop in stock so literally, the whole compressor, ah, there we go, 
Now this end here, I do have one more. Um, where's that air blower? Yeah. All right, might as well go ahead and change out the last one. Since we have it, shut that off real quick. Relieve the pressure. Probably should put Teflon tape on that, but it's a brass to brass fitting. It should seal pretty good. <sighs> Almost felt like uh, about to strip them threads. Okay, of course the GoPro got hot and shut off. Um, that's just the way they do things. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about me wanting to put those horizontal tanks up there out of the way. Um, and then using them as just storage. I, I think what I'm going to do is at least try to get this running. Stay tuned for a video on this. We'll go through this. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to put 220 right to it, see if this motor fires off. And then we'll, we'll worry about that switch and all this craziness right here. But I definitely want to use um, that tank on my trailer as a storage so we got volume, you know. This already has a ton of volume in it and did a really good job. I think we're restricted, man. It didn't seem like that thing was blowing very hard. We might just need to up our uh, hose, get a bigger hose or whatever. But I have literally like man probably a mile of that hose i got spools of that hose up there i think that's a 200 foot run or something like that or 100 foot run and there's a couple other 50 footers in there 100 footers you know we got hose so we're finally going to be able to get some decent um air in the shop and like i said i'd like to get this thing either outside or on the other side out of the way so if i'm over here working i don't necessarily need to hear this thing running i'd rather not have it outside in the weather uh we'll find a spot for it here in the shop and then um then we got to work on what we're going to do with that other one i i i actually like to find a better shop something a little more reasonably priced and something with a 200 amp service even if it doesn't have three phase if i can find a shop that has a 200 amp service i could run that three phase generator and then it wouldn't matter i could run all the machines you know uh that's 50 horsepower so i could run the seven and a half horse the two and a half horse and the other i think it's a two and a half horse you know milling machine not that we'd be running them all at the same time plus i have already have a five horse three phase converter for that and i have a 10 horse three phase converter right here that we could set up to run some other things you know possibilities are there oh and uh wait to see what i decided i want to do with this thing so that i am not uh using see this ram here doesn't have enough stroke to do what i need but I want to keep that RAM in play for certain applications. Um, I am going to add two more cylinders to this to make this go up and down. And we're keeping the 100 ton on here. So this is gonna be like the only press um, of its kind, literally, when I'm done with it. Uh, because it's gonna go up and down in two different ways. And um, 
it, it's going to actually be pretty badass. I, I figured it was going to be the, the easiest way to do what I wanted to do and, and give me the stroke that I need. I need as much stroke up and down as this thing is wide. Um, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, as for the air compressor, hey, uh, it may not be the prettiest looking thing, but it was free. And uh, all I had to do was plug it in. <laughs> so if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We got tons of other projects we're going to be doing. And now that we got some proper air in the shop, we can step our game up a little bit. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. See if I can't cut this thing out. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay, I somewhat spelled my name, so I got to give us some brownie points for that at least. <laughs> All right, we'll put the camera here. Go back to what we started on. Now this is much thicker metal. Let me just give you a comparison. Oh, that's kind of hot. Let me get a pair of pliers. So this metal is like that thick it's probably half the thickness of what i'm about to try and cut i, I think that slack is probably messing with my ground Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Okay. 
ground is connected to that. All right, let's try some copper. Now, which coil? We're gonna have to be on this outside one. I'm still a little leery about this. I should probably have, where's my gloves at, man? This thing is slinging sparks. Threw it. 